morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Wednesday, November 14th. Uh, light day yesterday. We had a lot of chop. Markets tried to bounce early in the morning. Failed. We had a short cover and rally. That failed, and uh, so the uh, markets came into some selling pressure in the afternoon and right into the close. Gave back all of its gains, uh, and partly due to uh, not, not a, nothing, nothing really to drive the markets. As you can see, yesterday we had... A very benign day of um, economic and uh, economic calendar today should be interesting today tomorrow and Friday we should be getting some movement in the um, in the markets uh, and that was to be expected yesterday but nasty price action uh, price action was not what you want to see if you were a bull or if you're looking to buy this market this market is clearly in a downtrend uh, we are oversold. That does not give us a buy signal to be oversold. We need a trigger for that. I'm um, going to look into our indicators and see where we are in the markets. Um, so a very, very quiet day yesterday. A lot of chop. Markets were just moving sideways, bouncing back and forth in some ranges. Uh, and that's something that I don't like to get involved in, uh, only because um, you could be right and still get stopped out of your trade. So nonetheless, um, when we're going to move on for today, I'm excited for today. We have a lot of good stuff here. FOMC minutes at 2 o'clock, just a word of caution. Uh, if you're holding into the FOMC minutes, uh, this market could be skewed either way. Uh, so just use uh, caution with that. Initial jobless claims, we've got a core PPI, CPI. Uh, so this is going to be uh, interesting to see what happens and the developments going into uh, Thursday and Friday. Uh, just real quick, running out of numbers, S&P down 5.5. Uh, NASDAQ down 20 and Dow down 58. That's coming off of uh, markets when Dow was actually up about 50, 50 points or so. Uh, gold continues to be uh, uh, lagging, uh, but we are going to have that gold trade. I'm going to keep an eye on gold and, uh, and, and oil. Uh, really nothing much has changed from yesterday's morning call, but we're just going to run into the charts right now and uh, see where we are. Okay, now um, I wanted to, the, the, the big thing is really going to be here. It's going to be the NIMO. Now, we are negative 54. Uh, I want to see a big push lower. Now, does that mean that we need to get a capitulation uh, sell-off? No, that does not have to happen. However, it would be nice to see the NIMO down in somewhere in the 80, 90 area, even down here, really, this 100 area. I'd love to see one big sell-off, market capitulates during the day, and then closes close to uh, flat or positive. That would be a great sign that the market has now bottomed and we're going into a Santa Claus rally. Again, guys, that does not have to happen. I thought we may get it yesterday since we had nothing uh, really to drive the markets higher. Um, that didn't happen. We actually closed a little bit lower. Um, VIX, and I don't have the picture here because really nothing has changed. VIX also very subdued to what the markets are. Maybe we need that fear. Maybe we need that little bit of uh, that push lower and uh, get all the week longs out and then we start rallying and picking up a bunch of longs going into the end of the year but that's something that i'm going to be watching and this nymo i'm going to be watching every day at the end of the day and see where we are here so 80 90 even down negative 100 is really what i like to see to get this market moving okay copper really nothing going on long-legged doji good sign you know uh undecisive here or indecisive of where this market's headed but it's at least a good sign here. It could be an, it's in the decision candle, but uh, we really need to take out 350 to really get that confirmation that we're going to move up a little higher. A lot of resistance, though, 20, 250, and we're running into a band of, of resistance. So a lot of work to do for copper, but again, at least copper kind of stabilized here at the 347 area, if, if there's any sort of a bull sentiment. Take a look at the NASI uh, daily now. This is the daily. I usually show you the weekly, but I didn't want to just show you how we actually went on a sell signal way back here in uh, September 24th or so, and then we just chopped around. Now we're getting into this oversold territory here. So, But again, MACD still have not crossed over, so we're going to be looking for any clues to see um, and get our indicators getting turning positive and get some positive divergence, and that will give us a trigger to get long the market. Right now, market's still on a sell signal, and we still be still should be looking to sell rallies. Dollar, and this is going to be key. I took a lot of the stuff off from the past. Wanted to show you just exactly where our resistance zone is 8150, 81, and we're into it now. And if, there's actually a little bit of a wedge, if you can see that, a rising wedge into resistance, which is a good sign for the bulls if the market does want to pull back. The dollar needs to actually start to sell off here. And I, you can see here our US dollar ratio um, is actually around. So I like to see that start to roll. And our stochastics are here are way overboard. So that's also a good sign. All right, now let's run into the indexes. And again, guys, really nothing really has changed. You can see here on the 10-minute spiders, just want to show you price action. Three days of an inside day. 
we did sell off, and then we, we actually recovered going into 11, 11.30, and that was really the end of it. We sold off. We set, went sideways for uh, for two hours, and then we sold off into the close, basically hitting the lows of the day. Not a good sign that the market cannot sustain itself here and try to get some sort of a rally. And this is just clearly a short-covering rally, so really this is nothing to be excited about. Um, in the short, short term, I'd like to see, let's say, 139.50, a break above 139.50 and hold in the spiders. Um, that's going to be really a good a good indication that, hey, we have re um, um, negated the downtrend and now we're starting to head up. But this is going to be a good sign, 139.50. Take a look at that for today, tomorrow, and in the end of the rest of the week to see where we go from there. Um, let's take a look at our daily, a weekly chart. Now, I did a weekly because I want to see – if there's any kind of confluence areas of support, and there is. See, we're here right now. So if this is going to be a bounce area, and I mentioned a couple weeks back, and we do get that sell-off um, a few weeks back, actually, 1375, 1350 will be that area of support. And if you can see here, this is going back from 2009. We have two areas. I have one highlighted in, in a red dash line, and I have one in a solid blue line. And this one here is coming right up, right into this horizontal area of, of support, which was resistance. So this is going to be a good area, basically, to bounce at any time in, in the S&P. Now, we are up in the pre-market, but that really doesn't mean much. We're up about seven handles in the pre-market. We need to get some sort of, of movement. Now, just quickly on the econ data, um, we have had some positive trends on economic data in the last couple of months. Manufacturing has been positive, which is a good sign going into the holidays and going into the first quarter of next year. So we should see um, some positive data come in. Now, if the data is negative, that's just going to fuel the fire to f for further downside probing. And um, again, I wouldn't mind seeing a capitulatory sell-off maybe back into the 1345 area, even down here to 1325, and then start to rally. And if the market does capitulatory, uh, does a capitulatory sell-off, we're going to rally pretty hard because a lot of shorts will be will be scrambling to cover, uh, and then they're most likely knowing that we do have our Santa Claus rally coming uh, in the coming weeks, and that should be starting quite soon. If something uh, uh, anything could negate that, obviously with the fiscal cliff, what's looming in uh, Washington, and of course Euro uh, Europe and the uh, eurozone with Greece. So just keep that in mind. Anything could could skew the charts. Okay, so there's the weekly chart. Daily again, we did break. The 200 day now so we had an inside day for three days and now yesterday's price action did break it we are sitting and you can't see this this is a 50 percent retracement so we are getting into areas of bounce movement so if we can get into 50 61.8 percent will be that 1345 i would be more inclined to look to buy down in this area here if this market did sell off okay um again look at our volume profiles this is something that scares me a little bit and this is this whole thin zone area. This is really thin. So if this market does start to break here, um, that 61.8% is really the line in the sand. That's going to really need to hold. Otherwise, we could retrace this whole rally back from um, early May. So this is something that, that really needs to hold. Bulls really need to defend this area here at 1350. Otherwise, we can go back down here and, and you know, this is later on, but God knows what would happen down here. So this is something that, um, you know, I wouldn't mind a little dip lower and then, of course, a hold in that 61.8% retracement and start to work its way back up again. Okay? But keep an eye. This is We're getting into bounce territory here in the, in the S&P cash. Basic, a quick little move. We're getting close to that area here, as I, as you, uh, as I mentioned a couple days ago. The quick chart of the S&P 500 with the ATR. Um, I would like to see this hook up a little bit more and then maybe um, get us uh, get our bounce that we're looking for. But just a quick little uh, clean chart here. Now, yesterday, 60-minute chart. And I like looking at the 60-minute chart during the day along with a 15-minute chart and then, of course, a 5-minute chart. Um, positive divergence we see here formed here, here, got a little bit of a bounce. We had basically a flat line, but we did have a little bit of positive divergence on our stochastics and MACDs, and we did get that little bit of a bounce here. However, that that failed miserably. And as you can see here, we bounce up here into the afternoon, and then we fail and close at the lows. Never want to see a close at the lows. It just usually can get a little bit of follow-through. Again, we are not getting that this morning. Um, some positive data coming out of Europe. Uh, the Europeans are buying up the S&P. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, really, that's actually very helpful for the markets going into the 830 data. Spiders, same thing, guys. I want to show the fibs because as we know, as we're starting to retrace, we want to see where can we be our, our movement. We did break that 200-day moving average. Now, most of the 
all of the indexes that we follow are below the 200 day moving average and that's here the 50 50 percent retracement and as you can see here guys our next day would be 135 okay so watch this again a little bit of better volume than tuesday but really uh, lower tracking lower than what we usually like to see and stochastics oversold macd's oversold um, but again we need to see these things that we indicate start to turn up transports hold it in there now that's another good sign um, by watching us transports i like to see um, we get a little bit of bid to the truckers and, um, uh, and this is getting into seasonal strength here so if the if the transports aren't at least not selling off that's going to be another good sign here but we had an inside day we really need to start to see the transport start to move here and i like to see risk on sectors starting to move as well positively the builders you know uh, consumer discretionary i want to see the transport start to move you know so that's something that i'm watching as well with a little cluster of uh, indexes that you can put during a day on a watch list and you can just watch and see are they green or are they red it's really simple to um to uh, to do iwm's russell here's what's concerning me russell um russell had a nice big pop early i thought this was going to follow through a little bit to the upside did not um, we actually sold off and went to the lows. We're already at the 61.8% retracement, so the Russell really needs to start getting going here. Um, next area here, another little thin zone on a daily chart. You're looking at 77, let's call it $77 here, round lot number, um, right, right about there, $77. So um, we, that's going to be your next area. Then, of course, the FIB, 76.16 is your 76% retracement. But we're really here starting in bounce mode territory here, so... Keep an eye on the IWMs. I watch them every day. Um, risk on, the IWMs usually start to pick up momentum and start rallying first before the other sectors do. Diamonds, Dow Jones, 61.8% um, retracement running into, again, this area here into our bounce territory here looking for a, re a move and a retracement back. Stochastics has not quite rolled up, but it is starting to hook up. So something that I'm going to be uh, keeping an eye on as well. And here's our Apple, which is basically... Uh, um, taking the market hostage here uh, way oversold uh, I personally like I said 555 for me would be to buy in or 522 would be uh, really here's your next spot would be look to buy in just kind of dipping your toes with a tight stop below maybe a three four point um, stop below that 522 um, because this market does look ugly yeah we are deeply oversold um, but guys anything could happen with Apple as you know we all come into seasonal strength with Apple I do expect a bounce here at one point in time but again inside days for the last three four days we really had hasn't got a chance to rally as well as the market so um, but I like to see this more this area hold here that 50% retracement we're right we where we here now and again a break below that look at this thin area this volume profiles ugly I mean this thing could get really really ugly if, if this uh, news comes out negative again there was some negative news out of Samsung saying that they're uh, um, uh, that Samsung is going to be charging Apple a great deal more money of the operating system for the Apple uh, um, iPhone. Um, so that wasn't the good news either. So, you know, we just got to keep it one step at a time. Again, I don't trade it, but if we're looking to trade it, 522 or 555 is really going to be the buy in for me with a tight stop on either direction. All right, let's take a look at lastly the, um, the Qs, and then we'll go into a couple more charts and then we'll, we'll call it quits here. Qs daily, again, guys, just really Apple taking it hostage. We're down here at the 76% retracement here. This is really going to be the line to see in that 62. And other than that, we're going to start looking at uh, 2000 and, uh, 2010 and 2009 lows here if this continues, uh, which I really don't expect it to continue. Um, USO, nothing really happening. We are in this uh, little bit of a trend channel here, as you can see. little downtrend channel and really needs to really break above it. And right there. So you can see here, we're in this downtrend channel. And in order, oh, excuse me, in order for um, uh, to really get going, I mean, you can take a stop, you can take a, a trade here. Me, I'm not looking to pick a bottom. I like to see you chop around and start breaking up higher, and then really start taking out this 30, call it 33 here, and uh, chop around a little bit higher up in this area, gap fill this area, and then really move higher because uh, uh, just really weak with um, with the markets being weak, uh, oil's not going to rally with it. And then lastly, GDX coming into our buy-in territory here. And I'm looking at this a uh, little bit more, maybe another 50, 60 cents in a GDX. And um, I'm going to look to take a little bit of a long trade here. And, and if I get stopped out, we get stopped out. But we're looking for 
um, continued move high. We're coming to some seasonal strength into GDX in the gold area, gold sector. So I'm watching closely for, um, for, for GDX to really start getting going here. It is options expiration, guys. So just use a little word of caution. Could be a little bit whippy going into this week. But next week should really, uh, really set the tone um, in the next couple of weeks going forward. Have a great day, guys, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.